Let me get out. Yet another family business taken by eminent domain in Connecticut. The there. project down the road, which is, was an eminent domain, yeah. which was fought for a long time because it was a major dealership, a Chevy dealership, Maritime Motors, Right. but they acquired the property, the man who acquired it, took it, didn't turn a shovel, sold it for $17 million, walked away, and now it's still, it's been at least 10, probably 15 years, a dirt lot with no tax base and they want to develop this area and that area is still in turmoil. It, it, that's proof that it's not working, the system's not working. It doesn't sound Now who did he sell to? Who did he sell to? That again Get closer so the sound comes that in. That again it. is that my sister knows that it's a it was it, it is a big company who has backbone, but they want to do such outrageous things that they want to build a tunnel Underneath the railroad, this way. Now roll. That project down there is a terrible thing, but it only highlights where the position that they're leading us into. They want to take this property. They want to give me less than what it would take. I would agree and say you replace my what I have here. I have four apartments, a shop, a storefront. You replace that, and I will accept that. That's a fair deal. Is it uh, the Norwalk redevelopment? It's Agency. Agency. Right. But the whole scheme seems to be undermined by the fact that the developer can come in, take your property for the price that he wants to give you, which, is? He, which is half of what we value it at, but even at that, we're going to be displaced that even at full, even if he gives me top dollar here, it will not replace what my operation is because the cost of everything going sky high. How long is we, we would accept a good deal in a reasonable way. We're not, we're willing to work with him, but it's outrageous. When he tells, we're nowhere near together, but when he talks to one guy against the other guy, he says, we're this close to making a deal. And we are so far. He says the same thing about everybody around. The only guy, he might have a, somewhat of a close deal there, but he lies to the people surrounding us. His lawyers. Everybody. He says that they're this close to making a deal. Who is that, sir? Stanley. Stanley of, of the Norwalk? Well, no, he's amazing. the private developer who's in the, the deal. He's in so, so the Norwalk Redevelopment Agency... Uh, he's, he's in cahoots with the Norwalk Development Agency. I can't say that because I'm just a dummy. Oh, how, did they, how, did you get the, how did you get the power of the Norwalk Redevelopment Agency to, to force you to, to, uh, to uh, give in? They say that this area is blighted. There's, they, they have tried one approach, but when, when New London's issues came up that, and again, I don't, I'm not as knowledgeable as my sister is, but it changed from one aspect that they call this area blighted. And they walk through and they see parking lots, they say, that you can do more with or whatever. But are there other parts of Norwalk you can call blighted under the same premises that are, that are not blighted? That are protected, in fact? I mean, they're just picking on you, right? I don't know if I would say they're picking on me. They're just trying to, like, there's a project down there that went sour. There's also the Wall Street project that they're working on. That's another area that they're trying to take over. And that has like issues too that just came to face that the one of the major owners thinks that he's gonna like avoid the whole takeover situation on Wall Street. Now this isn't this is called Midway, I believe. Mm -hmm. There's like that section down there has its name. Wall Street area has its name. And this is the Midway Station. Wall Street's had a problem for the duration, though. I mean, I think the problem is the parking down there, right? 
they can't get good parking so the stores can't survive. That's a little bit different from what's happening over here. Uh, Casey, how long has this shop been uh, in business? 25 years. Does it go back 75 years as far as the history? It's been a sheet metal plumbing establishment for, I would even guess, 100 years. I mean, it was an old stable barn in the back where our shop is, and it's everybody that sees our sign because we're sort of boisterous yeah. comes in and says they don't understand it. They almost, we're almost like providing. I feel that we're providing a service to the area, as far as when if we're when we go down, our customers. I don't know where they're really going to go. We can't be replaced by a Home Depot, and they wanted to rip this down and put things like Cheesecake Factory or you know the the storefront, you know, dime a dozen establishments that you can find anywhere. And you've, you, your, your uh, family has invested in this land for over a hundred years, right? No, it's not my family. We took over later. Okay. But it's been this kind of a business for approximately a hundred years. Right. I only came into it 30 years ago. Uh, 30 years ago. So for 30 years you invested in this property and, and this and these this maintain the apartments yeah. and this and this and and you, and you you invested in it because you thought it would maintain a certain value and then the day came they came with the North Redevelopment Agency came down here and said you got to go and we're only giving you half value for this property is that what happened? It sounds like that's what's going they're leading up to. So of so course we're fighting it yeah. and we want to get you know what's the problem and, with fighting it? What's, well, they're they talk like they're going to help us and work with us. Yeah. But we haven't seen any proof of that yet. But you said it was like a lot of nods and winks. Want to talk about that? What's this nods and winks thing? It's just when you become involved with the meetings that in front of the um, council, no matter what you, they've already has, they know what they're going to say. So when when my sister, who is very active, would go up there or anybody would go up there and voice their opinions, it was like, it was a waste of time because they knew already what they were going to say and what they were going to do. Okay, and what's in their plan to replace this? this they want to make this the San Francisco of the East Coast with trolley cars going down the East, the West Avenue here, which is like, they come up with these they said this is going to be like the dreamland of a development. I mean, they just come up with these phrases that are totally off the wall. But I don't know if I want to say any more because... I tell us about the Olympics. What do they have to do with it? Anything? Well, he owns... Stanley, the developer, owns that company. Okay. So that's what they want to do. They want to join these two properties and be able to... Well, he, or he already owns that property, that property everything behind me he owns that that's his office right there that brick building Let's see. and here timmy curry who's a tire shop has been an established business for probably 50 years he's even you know like he goes way back they want to give him less than market value okay the last question the united states supreme court and and uh, Kilo versus New London said it was not their business, not the jurisdiction to rule on uh, deprivation of property by citizens. What do you think about that? What would you say to the Supreme Court on that ruling? It wasn't their jurisdiction, it was the state matter. It's, it's Knowing that the Constitution is supposed to, it's supposed to protect, protect property the property rights. people who work all their lives to build a business, to support other, not, it's not only my livelihood, I have employees that we support, I pay our taxes, I have tenants that work locally, who they say they're going to give them fair value, um, or fair um, housing, our housing is a third of what they say is fair housing, these people can't afford $1,200, $1,500 a month rent, this is an $800 a month rent, where the guy who's working hard, trying to make a living, trying to stay in town, trying to buy produce and whatever from the area, they're, they're going to chase them out. We have more housing. Right now the market is so poor and we have, there's the numbers of condominiums that they want to put well, in. Because the wind, so you're not getting it on the side. Okay, go ahead. The, 
the, the uh, amount of condos that they're putting in this area, I can't see where the people are going to work to fill that housing. And they say, we're going to offer the low-income housing, but you know where they're going to offer it? Down in the ghetto. They're going to go to the area which is really blighted, build some housing, and say, okay, here's the low-income housing, but stay out of this neighborhood. That's one other. So they're charging you taxes to rip you off. Oh, you wouldn't believe what the infrastructure, that's another big factor, is that the original developer says the road work infrastructure would have to be paid by the city or the state or whatever. But now they're saying he has to come up with it. So he has to now deal with other people who are in the infrastructure zone where he thought the, the state or the city would just suck them up and that's no questions because that's a whole different thing, but now he has to deal with them. But you can see, it, like there's the two pieces of the property, there's a dirt yard down there and there's two pieces of the property. Now you go down there and you tell me that's blighted. So, so, so it's not equal protection of the laws then? It's they work it to the what they want. The right. issue can be what they want. To call this area blighted, because there's parking behind the bank down there that they say, you know how, I mean, everybody knows about parking. They give you like half of what you really need. But to say because it's a parking lot, it can be more valuable. Well, it's they just can say what they want. Uh, just to get hold of your land. But back to the original question, do you believe the Supreme Court should have considered it part of their jurisdiction and ruled on it? Yeah, they should have ruled against it. To, to have yeah, well, ru ruled on the issues, whatever. But yeah, but right, ruled against it. But th what they what they said is that it was none of our business. It wasn't our jurisdiction. Is it the Supreme Court's business, as far as you so, are concerned? The United no, States. No, this is my life. This is my life. Yeah, it, it is the so, Supreme Court's business that that their property is being taken from you, right? Yes. What is that noise? It is that the, to try to protect me, but I don't see that happening. Right, so they should have stepped in and protected you. Correct. Okay, now now uh, the Connecticut Constitution says about the same thing, okay, that they can't take your property without just compensation. What they can make that any way they want, just like they said, the governor said that they can't do it just to raise the tax basis. Well, that malarkey that she pushed over on that, Governor Rell, that is so, like, just... Washing it clean. Is it Thank you.